the, the little stand and uh, it was like a culture shock for them. They got off the coach and they were straight down into a, into a lot of muck and uh, it unsettled them, I think, from the, from the word go. I remember particularly the, just the, the cut of the Italians as they arrived. Uh, there, was, there were all these stories about how they'd bring their own chef and bring their own wine because they obviously couldn't uh, pollute them, themselves with uh, what they'd get in that loan. Uh, but just that they, they, we had never seen anything as glamorous as the people. Uh, like just the, they looked like sort of brown people and at loan, at loan players looked like white people. They, they were all bronzed and they were doing these exotic warm-ups before the match, you know, uh, while uh, we didn't warm up before the match or anything like that. There was a pipe band led by a goat and people laughed at that and I remember some of the Italians, Romeo Benetti, the famed, famed hatchet man, looking at this pipe band. I knew that he, he had never seen anything like this before in his life and um, had, you know, feared for what the day might bring perhaps. The referee from Denmark, Mr. Sorensen, and at Lone's greatest ever day. The occasion was also to be the most fateful day in one man's career. It was like an international, you know, with the, among the people that were there and the support we had. You know, and Italians came from Dublin everywhere, chip shops around the place. They were all here, shouting for AC Milan. We were all geared up, Do you know, we thought it was a great achievement to even play against them, you know, and I'd say deep down we didn't believe we could beat them, you know, but at the end of the day we should have beat them. David, Daly, Martins is only support player in the middle. And there's a penalty, there's a penalty for that long. They were after coming to watch us playing and we got a penalty against Shamrock Rovers and I had a habit I always put it to my left, to goalkeeper's right and the minute I, it was going through my head would have changed, you know, and, uh, but I hit it to my left, he's right. And Albert Hose, he, he was down waiting on it, you know, before. He nearly had to come out to collect it, you know. Albert Hose facing John Minnock. Minnock it kind of made me famous, you know, for the wrong reasons, for missing the penalty there. People still chat about it. Even last week I was down in Athlone and people were on about it. And like, Athlone played that team from Belgium and they got two penalties and Joey Slam and missed them. And that's, that's only about eight years ago and they still remember the SC Milan match, do you know? Well, as a 10 year old, I was broken hearted and I felt like killing John Minnock. Um, but 20, 24 years on, I can forgive him now. The game finished nil all. Out here at the corner flag, here's Minnock for Athlone. And two weeks later, Athlone were beaten 3-0 in the San Siro Stadium in Milan. So although John Minnock's penalty miss was probably academic, it's still something he'd like to get out of his system. We're here to try and rectify the penalty miss. We tried to track down Albert Hosey, but we couldn't get it. So my son said he'd do goal for us today. My name's John Minnock, son of John Minnock, 22 years of age. I play for Van Harps and I play left fullback. Pressure doesn't ease with the years. How many times over the years has this incident gone through John Minnock's head? And Minnock scores, no mistake, from the man who missed only one penalty in his entire professional career. And as he puts the ball in the net, maybe now he has also buried the ghost of 1975.